Hello. So you join us as we're uh, motoring into Weymouth as the start of my birthday weekend celebrations. And uh, there you see the galleon Andalusia, which is a replica of a 17th century galleon uh, built and launched in 2010. These photos are courtesy of a friend of mine, Joe, who went on board and uh, experienced the tour. Uh, so here we are. Uh, there's a bit of a queue and we've negotiated uh, permission to raft up next to these kind folk. Um, so we're just coming in and uh, there's Terry just handing over the lines. And we're going to have to wait here for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes until the bridge is ready to raise. Uh, and it was either that or trying to do some station keeping in the middle of the harbour. There's my mum, for her first time out on a boat. Well, his first time out on a sailboat. He doesn't do well on ferries. Fifteen minutes later. And you may notice we picked up a, a hitchhiker, somebody that wanted to come through the bridge with us, and it was a friend of a friend, so we, we said, yeah, come on board, lend a hand with the lines. I explained the one golden rule, we don't step off the boat until the boat's secured, and you'll see a little later she's jumped off the boat before we'd actually finished mooring, but such is life. So here we go, we're going through the bridge. Something everybody should do at least once, it's a bit of an experience. And you get so many people coming along to watch the, the boats go through. It's definitely a bit of a tourist attraction. So here we are just mooring up in uh, Weymouth Marina. And you'll notice that uh, Tiff is no longer on board. The, we were originally given a berth on the other side, but it was too narrow and there was a two knot current running through the marina because they'd opened the sluice gates. So it really wasn't practical to get into the berth on the other side. So we deci I decided to moor up here where it's much easier and much safer. So anyway, then we had an hour later, we started the barbecue. And unfortunately, for some reason, I have absolutely no footage of it. So you, you just have to use your imagination. I stole these off the uh, Weymouth Marina website. So the next morning, here we are. Um, Terry is once again helping with the lines. Uh, we've even set my mum to work this morning, um, getting her to coil up the power cable, having disconnected shore power. And we're just getting the boat ready to go. Here we are, back at the bridge again. This time getting ready to go out of the harbour. Terry using the force to help the bridge raise. I love Weymouth, it's just so beautifully, which is so pretty and picturesque. On our right hand side we have the King's Arms and Bennett's Fish and Chips. Quite often sail over for uh, fish and chips and then go home at midnight. And here we are, we have Galleon Andalusia again. This is quite majestic. I believe it's built out of fiberglass as a replica, but uh, whatever they, you know, it's a gorgeous, uh, gorgeous boat. And a friend of mine, Steve Belasco, took a beautiful photo of it with a long lens with it bearing down, and it just looks so threatening. 
um, stevebelasco.net, I'll put his link uh, down below. A lot of his, his uh, photos are amazing, definitely worth a, worth a look. So there she is. And there we go. 800 times speed. And we sadly don't travel at those sorts of speeds on a sailboat. Oh, so here we are trying to get the sails up. Now, I'd asked Terry to steer us into wind, and he hadn't quite got his nose into wind, so it was proving a little bit tricky, but still managed to get the sails up. And um, I think I'm also battling with the reefing lines, because uh, unbeknownst to me, somebody had gone and tied them all up into nice little knots while she was sitting on the foredeck, waiting for the bridge to let raise. Um, ho hum. There we go, there's me untangling all the lines again. Basically, I, I keep the reefing lines neatly piled on deck, but not knotted, and these, so that they will just run when we need them to, and then we lock them off so that they don't accidentally get pulled out. However, in this instance, they were tied up in all sorts of knots, which made getting the sail up really difficult. And if I'd been doing this single-handed, um, it would have been impossible. I'd have basically had to drop the sail and start all over again. So yeah, if you haven't already met Terry, uh, the bumbling sailor, he's got a great sense of humour, I'd definitely recommend his channel. So there we go, I think I've finally got the main up. Just need to tidy the lines a little bit. And then off we go for a sail down the Jurassic Coast, which is absolutely gorgeous. So Terry, you just really want to be steering about another 15, 20 degrees to starboard, just so that we're nose into wind. Pulling in the outer wall and letting off the topping lift. And then pulling the kicker, and that sets the sail. And then we're about ready to go on a very long port tack all the way down to Lulworth Cove. Well, as you see, it's a lot harder to get the sail up when it's when it's got wind in it. And if we'd just been pointing a little bit further to the right, that would have been would have been up a lot quicker. I'm not quite sure why Terry's holding the boom. But there we go, letting off the topping lift. And there we go, off onto a nice uh, port tack. I just finished tidying.
charging up the ropes. And then any second now, Terry's going to turn the engine off and we will truly be sailing. Still untangling reefing lines. The trick with sailing is do everything slowly and in a measured pace. If you start rushing around, that's when accidents happen. We're not racing, we're just having a leisurely sail. So there we go, we're off on track to Lulworth Cove. The, the original plan had been just pop into Lulworth Cove and have a look, go down to Warborough Bay, down to Chapman's Pool, round St Albans Head, up to Swanage and then round to Studland Bay and spend the night at Studland Bay. So the first stop was Lulworth Cove. We get there after about two hours of sailing. It's a beautiful spot as always. Uh, this video was taken a little bit later in the season, last year. As we're approaching Lulworth Cove, it became apparent that my mum's sea legs weren't quite as strong as I'd thought. Um, it was after this that I decided uh, there was no point in pressing on to Swanage. Uh, so Lulworth Cove is a great place to stay and that's what we did. And here we are, Terry's up front uh, sorting the anchor out. And we're just chilling. Beautiful spot. So anyway, so we stayed overnight and then had breakfast and lunch, just chilling in the bay. And before heading back to Portland at about two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Another two hours back to Portland uh, where we moored up and then nip to the local for a few beers with her friends. But all in all, it's been a really, really good birthday weekend. Thanks to all my friends that came down for the barbecue. Um, especially thanks to Joe for picking my mum up from Bristol Airport en route from what should have been Cardiff but turned out to be London due to work. Oh, and then of course the obligatory uh, bumbling taxi as we drop Terry back on his boat. I think I've come in a little bit too fast on this one and, and missed the spot. <laughs> but then I reposition and, and Terry's soon on board. And once again, thank you very much to our patrons. Um, without you, none of this would be possible. Um, as some of you know, this is now my full-time job, so I uh, haven't yet got enough watch hours to start earning anything from YouTube. I've had a couple of uh, friends sign up as patrons and I'm very grateful to them for doing so. Um, but if you want to see some more videos and if you want to see me learn how to sail or travelling around the world, then um, only costs a couple of quid a month. A lot cheaper than buying me a beer. Thanks very much for watching and peace.